Hey everybody, you're watching Legacy Television. We're Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons, and we're so glad you tuned into this broadcast today. I believe you are going to hear a word from God that can change your life. If you will become a doer of the word that you hear, Jesus said it's like building your house on the rock. And when the storm comes, you will not be moved. So that's what's coming. Before we get into the word today, uh, Sarah and I wanna take a minute and invite you to be a part of something very special that's taking place here at Legacy Church in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. Coming up May 18th through the 20th, we are hosting our first ever Family Faith Conference. And we are so excited about it. Our local family is excited about it. We want our global family to be excited about it as well. And we want you to go before the Lord and find out if He wants you here. This is gonna be an amazing time, Sarah. Brother Keith Moore is gonna be our special guest speaker. And this is somebody who the Lord has used in our lives to pour the word into us and to stir in us that same spirit of faith. We just want people to come be a part of it. Yeah, we'd love for you to join us. And it's just gonna be a special time in the word and in the presence of God. Amen. And we have seen this time and time again, every, every time we set our face to seek the Lord and to go after Him, He always meets us in the sanctuary. And I just love, you know me, I love His presence right. and I love when He shows up and I love when He gives us revelation like we've never seen it before. And that's what we're expecting. We're going to have times of prayer leading up the whole month leading up to this conference where we're going to be setting our face to hear from Him and to see Him and to understand what He's saying saying to us. And our church, we believe, is going to come up to a whole new level. Our yeah. partners, we're going to come up to a whole new level. So we're expecting really good things, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Yeah, and bring the family, too. This really is a family faith conference, and the Lord gave us that name because one of the major assignments on this church and this ministry is to teach people how to raise their family in a household of faith. So we are as passionate about our kids getting it as we are about us getting it ourselves. And the scripture talks about rejoicing at the word like somebody who's found a great treasure. That's the way we approach the word of God here. And that's the way we're training our children, your children, if you come be a part of this, to, to see the word of God the same way, like they've found a, a huge treasure and to get excited about it. And that's what's gonna be happening at the Family Faith Conference, May 18th through the 20th, right here at Legacy Church, Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. The information right now is on your screen, how to find out more about the conference, about the local area. And listen, if you've never been out to this part of the country, uh, it's God's country. It is beautiful here and there'll be <laughs> so much fun, so many fun things to do with the family through the day and then come spend the evenings in the Word. You don't wanna miss this. Family Faith Conference, May 18th through the 20th. So listen, right now, let's get into the Word of God together and we'll be back at the end of this broadcast. But in the book of Acts chapter four, I want you to look down around verse 32. Acts 4.32 says, Now the multitude, that just means a big crowd of people, of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Now that verse alone, talking about these beginning days of, of this church, the church that we are now and that we're a part of, there's a huge miracle already happening in that one verse alone. Do you notice he said that it was a multitude? Like we said, that's a big, huge crowd of people. And in this great big group of people, they were all of one heart. Somebody say one heart. One mind. That's an amazing miracle. Because most of the time, if you get, I don't know, two people, three people together, it can be hard to get them to agree on anything. You got all these different opinions floating around and you can see what miracle was already going on in this church. They were a crowd of people, but they were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Now look at verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And I want you to say this last statement with me. Look up here, it's on your screen. Say it with me. And great grace was upon them all. Say it again. And great grace was upon them all. One more time. And great grace was upon them all. 
Man, there were so many good things happening in this church. We're just here in Acts chapter 4, but if you were to back up just a few chapters, chapter 1, Jesus is ascending to the Father, and the last thing he says to his disciples is, I want you to go wait because the Holy Spirit's coming. And when he comes on you, you're going to be endued with power. That means power's going to come on you, and you are going to be my witnesses to people everywhere. So they left there, and in chapter 2, they were all just about 120 of them. Not, not even as many people as in this room right now. Just gathered together in this little room upstairs, and they're just doing what Jesus said do, right? Wait. Jesus said wait, so what do we do? We wait. And they're waiting, and they're praising, and they're worshiping God. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says, suddenly a sound as of a rushing mighty wind came from heaven. And it filled up that room where they were sitting. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came on them. They were all filled with the Spirit and divided tongues of fire. It looked like fire was sitting on top of each one of them. I mean, can you imagine being in that room that day when that sound filled up that place and all of a sudden you look at your friend and you go, Hey, bro, you're on fire. <laughs> No, dude, you're on fire. And everybody's on fire, but they ain't burning up. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And then this little group that was 120, they start, they start talking, but it's in a different language. And it sounds funny to them, but it's just what's bubbling up and coming out of them. And they come out of that upper room, and a bunch of people, was, there was a big crowd that day, they looked and thought, these guys are drunk. And Peter said, we drunk, but it ain't like you think. It's way too early for that. And he said, we are drunk in the Holy Ghost. And Peter started preaching. Now think about this. Here's a guy who just a few days ago denied even knowing Jesus. Somebody said, yeah, I saw you. You were with him. But because he was afraid, he said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And three times he denied even knowing Jesus. Now, all of a sudden, that guy is preaching. He's standing up in front of a crowd of people, preaching the gospel to them with boldness, unafraid of what others think or what people would do to him. Something happened. Something got in this guy. Something got on this guy, right? It was the Holy Spirit. And when he got done preaching, the Bible says that 3,000 people now, that's a little more than we have in this room today. But 3,000 people got added to the church. So the day started. How many people were in the church when the day started? 120. By the time the day was over, kids, how many people were in the church? 3,120 or somewhere thereabout. This is amazing. Growing this much. In one day, this is supernatural growth. This is God growth. And then, I don't know how much longer it was, the Bible tells us about a day that Peter and John were going to church, just like they did all the time. And they passed a man that was laid there right at the gate, but he couldn't walk. From his mother's womb, from the time he was born, he couldn't walk. And he'd been laid right there, and now he's over 40 years old, and he's been begging why? He can't walk. And if he can't walk, he can't work. If he can't work, he can't make money. So he's got to beg from other people. Do you have anything I can have? Can I have a little bit of what you got? You got anything in your pocket for me? Please, please, please. And Peter comes walking by and this guy looks at Peter and says, alms, which means, can I have something? And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but I got something else. Just a few days ago, I got this other thing that you got to taste. You got to get a little bit of this. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, what I, I love this about Peter, Peter, he didn't even let the guy do it. The Bible says he grabbed him by his hand and yanked that joker up. It's like you're walking whether you want to or not. Somebody say boldness, boldness. And that guy who could not walk for 40 years went running, leaping, and praising God. Amen. Glory to God. Something's going on in this church. And of course, that got a big crowd of people. And here goes Peter again. Peter pipes up again and starts preaching again. And the Bible says that another 2,000 people 
got added to the church. This thing is growing. Just a few days ago, it's 120. Then it's 3,120. Now it's 5,120. This thing's growing. Look at all these wonderful things that are happening in that church. And the good news is, that's the church we're a part of. These things aren't over. These things haven't come to an end. We're not reading about them so we can look back and say, oh, I bet that was neat. We're reading about these things so that we stir up some faith and say, bless God, that's what we're going to see. That's what we'll have in this church because we're part of that same church. Amen. Somebody say, same church. Same team, same church, right? But man, it, it went on. Uh, people got added to the church. Miracles were popping like popcorn. And then the Bible tells us in this verse that we read that there was this supernatural move of the compassion of God. And nobody, nobody considered that anything they had was their own. People looked at what they had and said, God, you need this. Show me who needs this. It's all available to you, Lord. If you want me to sow it, I'll sow it. You want me to sell it, I'll sell it. And the Bible says that there was no lack. No lack in that church. 5,000 and 120-ish people. And you couldn't find any lack among them. Wow. Wow. And like I said to you last week, moms and dads, it wasn't because that church was built in some rich part of town. It wasn't because they were going after the affluent, college degree holding, good job having demographic. No, it didn't have anything to do with that. The Bible told you what all of that was. How do you sum up everything that's been going on in that church? Everything from being baptized in the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Spirit and, and speaking in tongues and having power to preach and having power to work miracles and, and, and people being added to the church every single day and it's growing and it's growing and it's growing miraculously. How do you explain no lack among the people? Well, you explained it just a moment ago when you said these words, great grace was on them all. That's how you describe that. That's how you put in one statement every good thing, every supernatural, miraculous thing that was happening in that church. You say it like this, that place got some grace on it. I don't know what else to say. I don't know how else to explain it. Grace. Grace. How'd that church get that stuff? Grace. How's that church growing like that? Grace. Huh? How'd that church build that place? Grace. 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 I heard there's miracles happening there. how they do that? Grace. Grace. And not just grace. Help me out. What kind of grace? Great grace. You look that word up, you know what it is? Mega. It literally means mega grace. What kind of grace was on this place? mega grace and glory to God I'm declaring it over us and over this church this morning there is great grace now listen upon us all on all of us we'll talk more about that but let me draw your attention to one other thing he said in that verse great grace who can finish it for me great grace was upon them upon them one more time upon them now, of course, when he said all, he was probably just talking about the preachers, right? Hmm? When he said all, he, he probably just meant a few of the leaders. He, he said all, but really, honestly, he may have just meant some people that prayed a little bit more. Maybe some people that God said, okay, I like you a little bit more than I like you, so you're going to get a little more. Come on, help me out. What did he say? Great grace was on them. Let me just hear the kids. Grown up, shut up for a second. Great Grace Kids was where? On them. All. Oh, all. Oh. What does all mean? All means all. There you go. Thank you. Preach it, sister. Everyone. Grace was on them all. Is it possible that there was grace on the preachers? Yeah. Grace on the leaders? Yes. There was grace on the grown ups? You bet. But if grace was on them all, guess who else the grace was on? The kids. I mean, it had to be, right? 
This was not a grown-up only church. Nobody would have come to that. That'd be boring. Grace was on them all. From the least to the greatest, from the oldest to the youngest, grace was on them all. That means help from God was on all of them. Strength from God was on all of them. Anybody else in here that could use a little more God help? Man, I know I could. I love it when God comes alongside and says, alongside and says let me help you with that. Let, let me help you do what you're doing. Let me strengthen you. Paul prayed. You might remember this. And man, he was going through a real trial. And he says he pleaded with God three times to get this thing off me. And finally, God spoke to him and said, hey, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And God was saying to him, hey, I've already given you everything you need to deal with this. Quit begging me. Begging doesn't work. Pleading with God doesn't work. You know what works? Faith. Receiving by faith what grace, the gift that grace has given. And he said there that my strength is perfect. Anybody use a little more God strength? Man, I would like some God strength. I run out of Jeremy strength quick. I run out of Jeremy strength in a hurry. But when that God strength comes on on the inside of you. Let me give you a real good biblical example of this. Popeye the sailor man. Some of you kids are going, who the what now? Popeye the huh? Don't worry about it. Google it. But it was a cartoon when your parents and grandparents, and maybe your great-grandparents were kids. But you remember Popeye, right? He was, he was in love with olive oil, olive oil, type of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and there was this other guy in town, every episode. I don't know how they got away with making a cartoon where this was every episode. But Popeye's mortal enemy, um, what was his name? Brutus, I think later it was Bluto or whatever. Same, same guy, different name. He was also in love with olive oil. Now, this Brutus guy was huge. He's massive. He's this big brute of a guy. And he loved olive oil, but olive oil loved Popeye. So Brutus does what anybody does when he loves somebody, but they don't love you back. He kidnaps her, <laughs> ties her up with ropes, puts her on the train track. Man, this is love, ain't it? Meanwhile, Popeye's trying to fight Brutus to rescue olive oil. And poor Popeye, man, he is just getting plastered and pummeled. And he's taking left hook and right jab. And he's getting thrown all over the place until... Come on, parents, help me out. Please, for the love of God, help me out. He reaches into his pocket, pulls out spinach like we all have at <laughs> one point or another in our lives totally normal, and gets that spinach in him. And all of a sudden, this guy who's getting beat up, strength starts coming from some other place. And now he's got muscles, and his muscles have muscles, and he's ripping shirts, and his legs are... <laughs> and he's just getting massive. And man, he just starts fighting back, and Brutus doesn't know what hit him which is crazy because it's the last thing that hit him in the last episode, but let's not try to figure it out. And here comes Popeye to save the day. At the last second, he gets olive oil, saves her from the train tracks, and it's a happy ending. Well, there's a lot more spiritual uh, application than you might have thought just looking at the surface. There's something in you. I said, there's something in you. It's called the grace of God. It's called his help. It's called his favor. It's called his strength. And you don't got to live this life in and of and by and through your own strength. You got God's strength. Somebody say, I'm God strong. I'm God strong. I can do all things through Christ. That anointing that does what? Strengthens me. Thank you, Lord. So these people in this church had some mega grace, some mega strength. And it wasn't just preachers, it wasn't just leaders, it wasn't just grown-ups, it was on them all. So listen, kids, let me ask you a question. If I could show you somebody in the Bible, a kid, 
a kid in the Bible that had grace all over him. Would you believe that there's grace for you? Would you leave here today believing that God's got grace, that God's got a gift and help and favor and strength, not just for your parents, but for you? I'm going to do it. I'm going to prove it to you. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 2. And we're going to read just a couple of verses together here. We're going to look at a kid that had some grace, some big time grace all over him. In Luke chapter 2, verse 39, we're going to talk about a little boy named Jesus. And the Bible says in Luke 2, 39, when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. So it's talking about Jesus and his family, his mom and dad. At this point, he was an only child. <laughs> and it says in verse 40 that the child, again, this is Jesus, the child grew and became strong this translation says in spirit, but if you look back at the original, those words aren't even there. Really what it says is Jesus grew, he became strong, filled with wisdom, and listen to these words, the grace of God was upon him. Now this is pretty early on in Jesus' life. We're reading Luke chapter 2, which is a long chapter, and most of it is what we call the Christmas story. You ever heard that story before? It's a great story. And you might remember that there was kind of a big deal made out of Jesus' birth, right? And we, we still make kind of a big deal out of it today. And it was a big deal. It is a big deal. It was such a big deal that angels filled the sky and said, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And they're out there preaching to a bunch of shepherds. And these shepherds watching their flocks by night, they get all stirred up about it because this angel just said, unto you is born this day in Bethlehem, in the city of David, the Savior. And evidently they believed it because they left their sheep and they ran to Bethlehem and they started looking. And the, the angel said, I'll give you a clue. He's lying in a manger. So they didn't go to hotels. They didn't go to houses. They're looking for barns. They're looking for a manger. And they found him. And the Bible says that they came, they found Jesus laying there in a manger. Of course, Mary and Joseph are there. Who knows what kind of livestock and cattle are all around him. And they began to tell Mary, Jesus' mother, everything that the angels just told them. And Mary's response, this is, this is important, we may mention it again here in a second, but the Bible says when she heard it, she kept and pondered these things in her heart. There is power in a pondering heart. Amen. She kept them. She pondered them. She's thinking about them. Then when Jesus was just about I don't know, a month or six weeks old, they brought him to the temple to be presented to the Lord. And when they brought him in, there was an old man there named Simeon who the Lord had spoken to years before this and said, you will not die until you see the Savior. Now, Mary and Joseph didn't come in the temple that day going, excuse us, Savior's here. Back up, please. Can we have some room for the Savior? No, Mary's just pondering these things. She's not talking about it. But when this old man, this old prophet of God, I guess, if you will, looked at Jesus, he knew who he was looking at. And he held him up and he prayed a powerful prayer over him. But when he was done, there was another woman there. The Bible says she was an older woman. And as soon as she saw him, she did the same thing. Mary and Joseph just thought they're bringing their baby to be presented and all these miraculous supernatural things are happening. He's getting words from God and, and prophecies being declared over him. And that's what happened when Jesus was about six years old, and, or excuse me, six months old, sorry, six weeks old. He's little, little baby. And then that's where you read in verse 39. After all these things, after his presentation, after they've dedicated their family to the Lord, it says, then they went back. And then verse 40 is where it tells us he grew 
He became strong, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Then the very next verse, and the very next verse says, are Jesus when he's 12 years old. So we go from one verse when he's six weeks to another verse when he's 12. That's kind of a big jump, huh? Yeah. And you might think, I wonder what was going on in Jesus' life, huh? I wonder what was happening when he turned one. I wonder what Jesus' first birthday party was like. <laughs> I wonder what was happening when Jesus was a toddler. I wonder what was happening, right, when he's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. And you might think, well, the Bible just doesn't tell us anything about his, his young years. Wrong. The Bible tells us everything we need to know about what was happening in Jesus' life. You want to know what happened to Jesus? Man, this is, this is spiritual. This is miraculous. This is amazing. You want to know what happened to Jesus? He grew. <laughs> right? He grew. I can describe those first few years of Jesus' life to you. When he was born, he just did everything a baby does. It's kind of a funny thought, but Jesus wet his diaper. No, I'm serious. He, did, he came as the same way that you and I came into this world. And he grew. And he grew. And Jesus learned to talk. And then Jesus learned to walk. And then Jesus grew just like you did. And the Bible says as he was growing and getting bigger, the same way you grew, the same way I did, the same way you learned to walk, he learned to walk. The same way you learned to talk, he learned to talk. The same way you got taller, he got taller. The same way you got stronger, he got stronger. But the Bible also says he was growing in wisdom. And here's, here's something important to notice. Grace was on him. Grace was on him. Now, you might look at that and say, yeah, but that was Jesus. No. Listen, don't think like that. Listen, the grace was on him. And you can become like him for one reason. You listening, kids? You can become like him because he became like you. I apologize, we have to cut this message short today. You know, our time is limited on these broadcasts, but the whole thing is available to you on the Legacy Church audio podcast. So take advantage of that. Get this entire message, get it down into your heart. And then what do you do after you've listened to it? You listen to it again. And you listen to it again until it gets down on the inside and the Word of God begins to take root inside you. And when it takes root, then it begins to spring up and then it begins to bear fruit. And then your life is never the same. I'm telling you, the word is so powerful. In this ministry, Pearson's Ministries International, Legacy Church, here in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado, we're about one thing. We are about serving this generation with the word of God, teaching them how to live by faith in this day of grace that you and I are living in right now. So for more information about this ministry or other ways to get messages from this ministry, just visit us online at pearsonsministries.com. We love you so much. We'll see you again next time on Legacy TV. Bye-bye.